morning, everybody. Um, six days away. Falls in the air. Basketball season is now here. Um, we've concluded our secret scrimmages um, over the last 10 days, 12 days. So that's that's behind us. And um, I think we've learned some good, valuable information on our team. Um, I thought we had a great week of practice a week ago. Um, played considerably better in the second go around of those closed scrimmages than I thought we did the first. Um, so I thought we took some steps um, in the right direction for sure. I, I, I like where we're at today. Um, still need to continue to work and and develop that identity and, and find some rotations, which I don't think that I completely have yet. So we're going to keep working through that. Um, still need some separation, as we talked about. I think last time we were in here in, in certain positions and, and players and roles for some definition with those roles. Um, but yeah, six days away from the Towson game. So we've, um, we'll, we're have we not putting our attention too much on Towson yet. We still got plenty to work on for the next few days. Um, big tracker treat tonight for us. So if anybody wants to come out to that, please join us out there outside the Coliseum at the track. And um, we'll keep moving forward, but we're in a good spot. So you said you've, you've learned good things, maybe some bad things. Uh, what have you learned? Give us a detail or two that you think, okay, better than I thought. And maybe something, oh, we still better work on this. Yeah, I, well, nothing, I guess, better than what I thought yet. That will probably take way way more time than what we have now. I, I just thought we were still trying to find our identity, and I didn't really like the identity. I thought we'd lost some of our pressure and, you know, just some of those things that have made us really, really good um, over the last year. And so it really was just getting back to, to who we are, what we are about, reminding them of, of how hard that is. And, you know, it, it's a long preseason in basketball, and I think maybe we got a little comfortable, and so we needed to get a little uncomfortable again and have that reminder. And so I think we were able to kind of reset a little bit. And once we reset, I thought we've been really, really good since then. You mentioned bank account last time. You said, I think, seven. Has anybody been added to that, or has any withdrawals? No withdrawals. Uh, no, we're not doing that right now. Uh, hopefully, we're just continuing to grow it. Uh, no, I mean, yeah, those bank accounts is what what the question was, and um, yeah, no, I mean, we, we've been together more, so bank accounts should be growing a little bit more right now. Um, I, yeah, I, I, it's probably more than seven. I mean, we're probably up to eight or eight for sure, maybe nine that I think are starting to separate a little bit. Um, but you know, within that eight or nine, what? groupings go together what groups of two three four five that's what I just still don't know and that's going to take some time who's been your most consistent player to this point would you say oh uh, most consistent um you chart everything you know yeah I mean most of the returners you. probably I mean I've been mostly consistent but that's probably also just my eyes because I've seen them seen them do it it's it's the new group that I'm trying to get a little more consistency with and um, you know, what are you? What are you going to be? Who do you play with? You know, how do we play you? Um, what can we run for you? Those types of things. So that's the piece. That's the, when I say separation, that's the same thing I'm talking about is just what is it going to look like and, and what groupings. And, and we have those numbers. We just don't have them all yet. And we need some game numbers. So that takes usually at least probably five or six games before you get really any real data. So it's going to be a work in progress. And we understand that. Um, and we have options this year. It's just what's so different than a year ago. There just wasn't as many options. It was pretty much set about this time of year for the most part. And we rolled with it and started that same lineup every game last year. So anyway, so it's still a work in progress, but it's going to take us six or eight games probably before we really know. Coach, in terms of, of trying to get to learn some of the new players through the offseason, uh, where are you at with, with Sydney in that process? What have you learned about her? Uh, during the offseason and preseason scrimmages. And, That's Sydney you know, Shaw you're yeah. talking about, right? Um, well, we've learned quite a bit. But, I mean, she really, just from the summer, though, it's been more of the same. I mean, the kid has a great ability to score the basketball. She's consistently been our best shooter um, through the summer, through the fall, through the scrimmages. Um, so she's really, really putting the ball in the hole, doing it in a variety of ways. She can pull up. Probably would challenge her to get to the rim a little bit more because she can get going from three and, and, and kind of settle at times. Um, and then it's really kind of – I think she has an ability to be a really, really good defender. Um, but we've got to hold her accountable on that end a little bit more. And, and she's got to hold herself a little bit more accountable. But, um, no, she's going to play a huge – she's going to play a huge role for this team. And she's been everything and more than, than what we needed or what, what we thought we were getting. Her defense, was that maybe the biggest question? Coming in, how would she? Well, I think there was an offensive efficiency. Just she wasn't the most efficient 
player at Auburn. And so it was just – but we knew she had the skill set to be. It was just showing her what shots to take and instilling confidence her to take those when she's open. And, and I think she's feeling that now that she has the freedom to take the right shots and she knows what those right shots are for the most part. Um, you know, and then it's just, yeah, really trying to get her to just to completely buy into what we're doing on the defensive end. So many players come back – exact same style as last year I doubt that but they, so uh, you know is this going to be a different look different style for this year or? there'll be some subtle differences I mean I think to the general person if you just came and watched us play no I don't know that you would think this looks entirely different um, you know there's some tweaks to the offense we play a little bit different we've liked those up to date um, you know, again, we just have a few bigger bodies. We can go a little bit bigger if we need to, which could help with rebounding. We can still go a little smaller and play four guards if we want to. So I just, we're going to have some options. And again, I think it could be different. The way we start may look different than what it looks like for the rest of the game, you know, but we just have variety. And as a coach, that's kind of nice. But I think we're going to play different ways just based on personnel and from game within the game, it may change. Question of can you guard the post a little differently than you did last year with the players you got? Well, yeah, we can. We just have a little more size um, in there. We have more fouls, as I kind of joke about, but and have seriousness. I mean, we yeah, we can do some things that we couldn't do a year ago for sure. Are we still where we probably eventually need to be? No, um, you know, we still need to continue to get a little bit better there. But no, between Danell and Jordan Thomas, and you know, even a tears of back, but CC like those are all bodies that we can legitimately put out there and throw at some of these bigger post kids that we'll face. One and two Tuesday, are you guys like, health-wise pretty much good to go? Yeah, I mean, nothing like season any. We just got a couple here and there, kids sitting out of practice here and there due to some bumps and bruises type stuff, but nothing that's, I don't think, long-term or even multiple weeks. So Probably early yet, but um, what can you tell us about Townsend? I know they won 20 last year and got to the, what, uh, semifinals of their conference tournament. Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you Yeah, know I, honestly, I don't know a ton. Yes, you're correct. Semifinal, I think they were picked third in the CAA um, to open the year. So, you know, a quality opponent, plays in a, in a really, really solid mid-major league. Um, I believe their re leading returning scorer is back, who's a preseason all first team you know kid. Um, outside of that, I haven't studied them a whole heck of a lot. So I've just done my basic preliminary research haven't got the analytics or any of those types of things on them so I'm probably still a few days away for me I kind of want to keep the emphasis on us and then when we get to the weekend um, at least for me and now my assistants have that scout so they'll they're already on it but yeah I don't want to I don't need all that information yet just generally speaking what are you looking for on Tuesday what what's going to make you happy after that game well I think that we get back to who we were um, now we're not going to look like what we did at the end of the year and I think sometimes that's hard for fans that's the last memory you have is how what we were doing at the end of the year and you forget now this is all new again and um, and so it's just again it's just that identity that we come play hard that we compete that we share the basketball we move it um, we're going to be excited you know I think as a coach you're always prepared at that first quarter may not look as aesthetically pleasing as you want it to just because they're so excited and can we get them to calm down early and just relax um they'll be like i said excited to play in front of the home crowd and the environment um so yeah i, I think that's what you're looking for if the execution you know is at a high rate then you know you're a little further along if it's not then you're like yeah okay it's early um we got a little bit of work to do but we've tried to hit home on some of the execution offensively and getting on the same page and especially with groups that have four or five returners in it. So if we put four or five kids out there that played a year ago, there is an expectation that we're maybe not clicking on all cylinders, but we should be, we should look somewhat at like a well-oiled machine. And then when we throw in the new kids, yeah, there's going to be some bumps, and, and that's okay. Coach, I'm building the rotations, as you talked about, eight, nine. Do you ever have a player that does one or two things so well that although they might not mesh in a lot of different areas, you're like, Hey, we've got to get her out here because she does these things so well. We've got to kind of find that role for her. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, it can be that. Um, again, it's so early to know, you know, just to tell yet. But, yeah, if they have a elite skill set, we're going to find a way to get them on the floor. Um, you know, if you're an elite rebounder, we'll get you there because we're not a great rebounding team. If you want to guard on the ball and get tips and deflections and turnovers, then we're going to find a way to get you out there because you're going to help our, you know, help our basketball team. So I think there's bits and pieces of that. But again, the more well-rounded we can get where they can do all of those things, that makes it much easier for me where we're not just maybe trading off offense, defense for possessions here and there. That's what we don't want to do if we don't have to. Um, but if we do, I think we have options to do that. Coach Nasser, obviously, like 
Patrick, Zaya, and Moseberry were here last year. Uh, you know, injuries and kept them. But there's some familiarity there with them. So I'm like, with them coming in now a year later, what were the expectations? Yeah, well, I mean, it's always to get healthy first. I mean, they're both just now and they're probably whatever, eight to nine month, you know, recoveries. I is coming off back to back season ending injuries. So, um, you know, for that kid, it's just to get back on the floor and enjoy and have passion and fun and get in game shape. And, you know, I think her mind is pretty good and it's still just trying to get body to catch up to mind. Um, you know, but Zaya has been with me for a long time, so she she knows all of this stuff. Um, Shayla's been a multiple ACL kid, so she's coming back from another one that she's already gone through that process before, and um, she can really shoot the basketball. She would be one of our better shooters, um, and again, it's just her. She's just got to trust it, and so there becomes that mental component of just trusting, getting back to who you work with, thinking about it, you know, messing with your knee brace, you know, whatever it may be. It's just really mentally allowing yourself to play as free as you can. And, um, you know, that's a process and sometimes doesn't happen as quickly as you want, but I think they're both working really hard. Are they both available? Right they're now? available. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Mark, I, was, I became a little intrigued by when looking at your schedule at how you wound up you know, with a regular season game with an SEC team like Texas A&M coming in here. How did, how did that game come about? Yeah, no, they're not really a great story. I mean, we're going to return to them a year later. We were looking for, you know, another Power 5 school, Power 4 now, um, to play. We actually thought we were going to play them this last year, and then we just could never get the date worked out. So we really just ended up pushing it back a year when we had a little bit more time and um, to get it right and where it fit in the schedule. Um, and I, I think they wanted to come here. We were going to go there last year, but when it, this year worked a little bit better for them to come here and for us to return the following year. So, um, yeah, nothing more than just, yeah, two coaches getting together and figuring it out. Have you found that to be easy, though, when you're trying to schedule a, a bigger school? Uh, no, I wouldn't say easy. Right. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a select few that, of course, want to play those are typically the top 10 teams in the country and sometimes you know I just think every year you schedule based on the team you think you will have coming back but in this day and age that gets pretty difficult and in basketball which is not like football you know they schedule what five ten eight years probably I think ahead ours is I mean we were scheduling games for this year in August you know, so it can go that late. Um, again, that's not ideal, but you do have a hopefully a pretty good idea of what type of team you will have. Um, and so we tried to schedule it based on that. Of course, you have some of the, the money home games that you're trying to develop identity and hopefully you take care of business. But, you know, like we got a scare with Wright State a year ago and it can always happen, um, you know, and, and then build it really from there. And so we wanted to beef it up a little bit for sure. Um, we thought when we obviously our seating in the NCAA tournament um, was held against us because we didn't think that was a the right spot or the right seed line for us. Some of it, you know, the information we got back may have been like the non-conference schedule uh, may have hurt us a little bit. Um, and so we needed to beef it up just a little bit. And so, yeah, I mean, we ended up, I don't know, the ideal was to get the two power fours in the same week with Pitt on a Tuesday and A&M on a Friday. But, you know, that's OK. We may end up with a Texas or somebody in that Thanksgiving tournament as well. So, yeah, I think if it plays out the way we think it's supposed to, it's a good, solid preseason schedule. And then we get to the Big 12 into December. And the, uh, Pitt, the Pitt series, is it pretty, like, moving forward? I don't know how many. No, this is it. This yeah, is it. They, okay. uh, yeah we're, not, we're not playing that anymore, I guess. Throughout the preseason, about the analytics of three uh, three point shooting and how you needed to be better at that. So, what have you seen on the court? Uh, are you better there? Will you get to where you want to be? Yeah, I think so. Uh, well, I think we're trending in that direction. I'm sure there'll be games where we don't, and there'll be games where we can really get going. Um, you know, but I think you know, depending on who we play, like we can have four or five kids out there that can shoot the basketball and, and feel comfortable doing it and shoot it at a high clip. Um, you know, we want to be a little careful. I don't want to just live and die by that three. And so I think there is, you know, 35% of our shots come from three and we shoot it at a pretty good clip, maybe up to 40% of those, then I think we're in a pretty good spot. If we're taking half of our shots from three or more, then eh, I don't know if that's still us. Um, but yeah, we need, we need probably percentage to go up a little bit, which should make the number, you know, the amount go up as well. That's the goal. Size, like, how does that impact Kylie? Does she have more opportunities than she would last year? Could she play the four? Like, what is that? Yeah, about? no, Kylie will probably play some more four than she did a year ago for sure, and less five. 
Um, and again, it just like it depends on how we want to play, who we're playing against. Probably some. So Kylie can be the five, but obviously she's not going to be the the big banger type five. That's not what we're going to ask her to do. But she can stretch the floor, space it, which really just gives those guards more room at the rim. I mean, that's the idea: is get rid of the biggest kid defensively and get her out on the perimeter to have to guard Blackston um, because of her ability to shoot the basketball and then create more space. And then I think there's times where that may not work and so we're going to have to go with the size and then we'll have to probably play her and Kaya or play a couple of bigs together at the four and the five if we need to Um, because that may be our best rebounding group is when we go a little bit bigger and you play a CC and a Jordan Thomas or a Tirza and one of those kids and now we've got a little more size and a little more rebounding. Judging by your look I'm guessing losing in the pit series wasn't your idea. Correct. Okay. Okay. To to Justin's question about schedule a very heavy November I think three in December, a little concerning. I, I know there's a lot going on in December with finals and holidays. Yeah, and well, so our finals is a week later than 95% of the schools in the country. So we got – that's the two-week where you're just very, very limited in what you can do. And so we fought like heck. There was one game in there that we thought we had, We one date for us that, you know, we just kept fighting on, and that's the one in August that we were still trying to find, and we just could never get it to – couldn't get it to work. So, yeah, we're a little light there. Definitely heavily, heavy in November. Um, it's kind of the way the calendar worked for the year. So, yeah, a little disappointing, but it's the way it works. So we'll roll with it. Well, how will you keep them sharp? I guess that's going to be the concern, right? Yeah. I mean, practice, I think, as we get going, um, I, I think we'll be okay. Um, obviously, the finals week, too. So we'll, we'll adjust there. But then, we you know, we go to Temple for that road game. Um, and then we turn around and get ready for Colorado for Big 12. So... I think we'll be. I, I, I'm not looking at it as a as a downside. We may need it just because of the heavy November. We may need to use some of those days off and get the legs back and, and get ready to roll. You guys could have scheduled uh, one or two. Two more. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. It's so we're 29 of 31. 31. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we had 29 you, last year too. So yeah, that's, that's not like. Yeah. So when you get to Tuesday, will it be a feeling of you know finally it's here or what's the feeling like for you? Well, I think a little bit of both because I'm in the feeling right now where it seems like it kind of took a while to get here and now I'm kind of in the hey hang on slow down like give me another like couple days here to get us right um so no they'll I think a little bit of everything it will be the man it seems like it took a while but yeah oh man we've worked really hard we had the foreign trip the whole preseason you know all the practices this group's ready we return a lot I'm excited to see the new kids when the lights come on to see what that looks like so I think it'll be a little bit of, of everything. But, no, we're, we'll be excited. They're tired of just practicing, too. Sure. You know, I mean, we've only played two against two teams now twice in the last whatever. So we're ready. Any interest at all on your part? Just, you know, uh, you know, you said a few weeks ago, uh, you know, your, your camps were bigger this summer. Uh, ticket sales have gone up. And now on Tuesday you might get your first look at what that more anticipation looks like. Uh, yeah, I think there's so. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. There's anticipation. I hope the crowd's great, and I hope all those new season ticket holders are there for, for the for opening night. Obviously, the men will play the night before, you know, and open it up and let everybody remind everybody there's there's basketball season and it's in the air and football's on a bye week. So, you know, we'll let them take their days off and everybody can come get excited about basketball. So, yeah, I think we have a a great home court. We have a great opportunity to protect it, and you know, we got a little stretch here with what four or five in a row at home. So let's see if we can't start something special off with the uh, volleyball court have you guys been able to get into the coliseum at all not very much uh, i think we've had two two practices one or two practices in there i think and that's less from last year that is less from a year ago okay. yep does you feel like that's going to impact you guys at all uh, probably not we should still have more of a home we'll be in there more than towson will be so uh <laughs> it still should be advantage us and some of these kids have played in there quite a bit but yeah i mean honestly i'd like to be in there a little bit more but that's kind of the way it works i guess and wasn't my decision. Mark, you mentioned having the same starting lineup each game last year, and obviously good health was a reason for that. But since you will have more depth this year, can you see players kind of coming in and out of that starting lineup maybe a little bit more? Yeah, I don't know that we'll – I won't adjust it just to adjust it. Um, I don't do it a whole lot based on other teams either. I want them to have to adjust to us more than me adjust to them. 
But again, I think within the game, like, yes, you're going to see a lot of different lineups. Um, we'll move Kylie around a little bit more. So, you know, she may start at the five and legitimately may not go back to the five for a whole half, um, you know, just depending on the way the game goes and the flow um, and the matchup. But yeah, no, if you don't play well, I guess that at the same time, like no one's guaranteed that spot. So I'm not just going to give it to anybody just because they had it a year ago or, or think that they, you know, deserve it. You're going to have to go earn that thing. And um, and the beauty of what we have right now is the bench can be a little bit of a motivator because we got some options now where a year ago we didn't have nearly as many options. So, yeah, it's not pressure, but, yeah, they need to perform for sure.